Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a bold adventurous man. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he. Jimbooey, Jimbooey, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventurous man. New Orleans, in 1830, was legally part of the United States. Illegally, it was any man's city. A whirlpool of intrigue, violence, and murder. And now it had hit me, Jim Bowie. River pirates had made off with $10,000 worth of my trade goods. I wanted them back. A the lady I knew had volunteered to help. I was waiting for her. Mademoiselle Dupre, I hope this won't put you in danger. No one saw me, and my coachman is loyal. Very kind of you to help me. No, monsieur. Selfish. I wish to return to France. If you get your goods back, you will be grateful, no? I'll be grateful. What'd you find out? Open, please. I'll only be a moment. Yes, ma'am. Come with me. at the rear table. The one with the glasses? Yes. That is Simon Ogilvy. He dines here alone every night, late. He doesn't look much like a pirate. He is worse. A respectable lawyer for disrespectable men. Even advises them what to steal. You think he might lead me to the thieves? No, he would never lead you. You will have to find some way to gain his confidence. But he will have to be something clever. A man as well known as you. I will come to your hotel as soon as I learn something more. Um, quickly. I acted quickly on the facts Madeleine Dupre had given me. That Ogilvy dined every night at the Barret Terrier. That he was nearsighted. And that he hated Lafitte. Jim. Why, Cousin Homer. Well, uh, Monsieur Bellarm, this is my cousin, Reverend Wilkins. I'll meet you inside. I'll be right there, Joe. Jim, boy, I've been looking high and low for you. Called at your lodgings three times today. Someone finally told me I might find you here at the theater. Yeah. Uh, something I can do for you, cousin? We're in trouble, Jim. Bad trouble. Oh? My boys, Matthew and Paul, have run away from home. Well, that's not so bad. I did the same thing myself when I was 16. Yeah, but they didn't run off to make their own way like you did, Jim. They ran off to go filibustering in South America. And their mother hasn't heard a blessed word from them since they left home. Well, New Orleans is an exciting place. They've probably been too busy, you know what I mean? No, sir. Not my boys. If they haven't written their mother, something's happened to them. Something dreadful. Find them, Jim. Please, look for them. I don't know. Every time there's trouble in our family, Jim Boy's got to saddle up and go help. Well, I'm sorry. This time, I'm going to help Jim Boy for a change. I'm sorry, cousin. I'm busy. I understand, Jim. Look, uh, why don't you go to the police? They can help you better than I can. I've been there, Jim. But uh, I thank you for your kindly advice. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Homer. Waiter. Yes, sir. Bottle of Madeira, Sonny. And hurry it up. I've got a thirst that's pressing real close to my bad temper. Up to it! Shake a leg! Yeah. Well, don't stand there gawking, Sonny. Ain't you never seen a real salt water sailor before? Go on out of here. Captain Hawkins? That's what they call me, sir. Captain Hawkins, late of His Majesty's Royal Navy. And who might you be? 
Jean-Jacques Toujours is my name, sir. I have the honor to represent Mr. Jim Bowie. He challenges you to a duel. Jim Bowie? That pigeon-hearted pig? He's calling me out, is he? Give me that card. Now, sir, you may inform that... that lily-livered poltroon that I'll meet him any time, any place. Go on now, off you go. And who do you think you're staring at, mighty? Well, I, I couldn't help overhearing, sir, and I want you to know that if you'd care to be seconded in this affair, I'd be uh, proud to oblige. Well, that's very obliging of you, sir. Very obliging indeed. And uh, may I have the acquaintance of your name, sir? Uh, Ogilby's the name. Simon Ogilby. But uh, uh, won't you join me here, sir? Well, I don't mind if I do, sir. I have some knowledge of this scoundrel Bowie who challenged you, Captain. I should like you to know that I share your low esteem of him. <laughs> then uh, let's drink to his, uh, his ill health, sir. And his cowardly and trembling hand in tomorrow's engagement. <laughs> And may I ask, sir, what is your particular squall with Bowie? Oh, it's a uh, troublesome inquisitiveness. In a word, I find him nosy. And fret no more, sir. <laughs> fret no more. Tomorrow, he will be engaged and scuttled. And may I add that if you bring about the extinction of Mr. Bowie on the morrow, certain advantages may come your way. Tell me more, sir. Tell me more. I know more about you than you realize, Captain. I've been following your activities in and around New Orleans for the last uh, week or two. Oh, you have, have you, sir? And uh, what did you find out about me? My, <laughs> you are inquisitive, aren't you? <laughs> it seems that both you and Mr. Bowie share that flaw in character, along with an interest in a certain Mademoiselle Dupree. Do you feel that it's hot in here, Captain? Uh, yes, it is getting a little hot. And I suggest you take off those ridiculous whiskers, Mr. Bowie. They must be unbearably itchy. Well, dog my cats. That was an amusing try, Bowie. When'd you catch on? I'm a devotee of the drama. I recognize the well-known actor, Bell Arm. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting for you ever since Madeline pointed me out to you through the window last night. Has it occurred to you, Bowie, but in the back country from whence you come, your maneuvering might seem less clumsy. I kind of like New Orleans. I don't think I'll leave just yet. Don't let these silken gloves deceive you, Bowie. Let's get to the point, Ogilby. Who's your employer? Oh, come, my good fellow. Let the curtain stay down. The show's over. It's time the players went home. Somewhere in this city, there's stolen property of mine, which I intend to recover. And how will you recover the fair Madeline? Madeline? She is beyond all conventional means of communication. Persist in this effort, and you may never see her again. There's a steamboat going north in precisely one hour. Be on it. And if I'm not? Then we shall take off the silken gloves. Why, look around you, man. This is not a stage. This is real. Could my carriage drive you to the steamboat wharf? You know, Olga Bay, there's one thing I've learned about you. And what's that? You're as blind as a bat. Without your glasses! Seize him! Seize him! Give him some more bruises and take him to his hotel. The three or four days following that merciless beating were a blur to me. A week later, I was able to sit up and take stock of my misfortunes, and also a little food. My talented friend, Bellarm, was on hand to help me, and to help himself. 
Uh, my bill, Mr. Bowie. Atomized and toted up. Oh, thank you. Mm. <clears throat> to rental and ruination of pirate costume, complete with beard, mustache, and eye patch, $20. Use a three-minute playlet entitled Invitation to the Duello, $15. Acting services of undersigned in said playlet and instruction in Cockney accent, $25. Total, $65. Are, are you sure you included everything? Well, there's no charge for the personal risk I incurred. Uh, you got out of there well before the roof caved in. Oh, I left precisely on cue. You certainly did. Well, hand me my pouch. It's on the dresser. Oh, would you see who that is? Or will there be an extra charge? A lady. A young lady? No, a character woman. Mama! Hey, Mama, when did you... Who are you? Jean-Jacques Ballarme, tragedian, at your service, madame. Well, take your service someplace else. What's going to happen here is a family matter and strictly private. Invitation to the duello. Well, Mama, don't I get a little hug, a little kiss, huh? The way you've been behaving, you're no son of mine, James. What's the matter? What have I done wrong now? Sit right down there. Huh? Sit right down, I'm telling you. Here. I want you to strike that out in your own hand right there. That name over your brother Reason. And if you don't do it, I will. You mean you want my name struck out of the family Bible? I do. Use the pen. Well, I don't want it taken out. That's an awful thing to do. It's a jot more awful to turn down your kin, folks. Turning down your own family and cousin. You ought to be ashamed, Jim. That's what it is. Cousin Homer, huh? Yeah, and he came to you in a great need, and you turned your back on him. I sent him to the police. Do you think he'd tell his troubles to a stranger? That's what the police are for. Not where we come from. Where we come from, that's what kin folk are for. But you wouldn't remember that, would you? Because you're too busy consorting up and down this wicked city with stage actors and painted ladies. And you think you're a son of mine. <laughs> oh, Mama. Don't have to get upset. Well, can't you see how Cousin Sarah feels about their missing boys? Well, can't you see how I feel about my missing goods? Oh, never mind about your goods. There's a law of God and there's a law of kinship, and you can't turn your back to either of them. Oh, Mama, stop it. No sermons, please. I can't turn my back on $10,000 either. The Lord moves in a mysterious way, and as long as you're right, Jim, he'll reward you. All right. All right, Mama. I'll look for him. I'll start right in. Well, that's better. Mama knew even less than Cousin Homer about where the missing boys might have gone. And Cousin Homer knew nothing. My best possible source of information was Moise Toulouse, the journalist. All I know is that boys of 60 to 20 arrived by the dozen, filled with hopes of glory and gold in the army of liberation. And just why do they aim to liberate? Who knows? Any one of the troubled countries to the south. And do these filibustering outfits ever actually leave the city? I doubt it. But then everything they do is highly secret. Hmm. Wait. I remember talking with someone. He was grieving the loss of a son to some vague cause. Hmm. Let's see now. Some shopkeeper. Yes. The apothecary. Charpentier in Canal Street. Fight and die on foreign soil? Bah! My son's body was found in the bayou, upriver, not five miles from here. Just turned 17, he was. Too young to die. An accident, the lieutenant said, on training maneuvers. Lieutenant? What lieutenant? Maduro, the officer of conscription. A Spaniard, uh, formerly a pirate, they tell me. You know where I can find him? Yes, at the Eau Cole Bleu on the waterfront. I wouldn't go there if I were you, though. Eau Cole Bleu on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -
door and we'll see you now, Mr. Bully. Here's your man, Capitan. Well, Jouvin. And Mr. Ogilvy. Quite a family reunion. You will be more comfortable without your weapon, monsieur. I have had reason to respect that knife. Oh, have you met Marcel, monsieur? To his intimates, he is better known as the Butcher of Barbados. So you must not let his uh, air of gentility deceive you. He also is a formidable man with knives. <laughs> oh, but enough of the pleasantries, huh, monsieur? You have come here for business. No. But after seeing some of my stolen goods and your wharf, we might as well put business on the agenda. This is regrettable, boy. You should have taken my advice. Funny thing is, it was someone else's advice that brought me here. I had nothing to do with stolen goods. I'm looking for two missing cousins of mine who might have been recruited by a man named Maduro. You have reason to believe that uh, they are among our conscripts? The trail seems to lead this way. Their names, please. Paul and Matthew Wilkins. Oh, I know them quite well, monsieur. High-spirited young men. In fact, much too high-spirited. We have had to discipline them. Yeah? To uh, train our recruits for military service in foreign lands, we try to give them practical experience here, uh, along the uh, river. <laughs> you mean like robbing barges and flatboats? Collecting supplies for our compatriots to the south. Unfortunately, some of them object. Your cousins have been very stubborn, very persistent in hanging on to such uh, awkward virtues as uh, honesty, morality. Mm, I can imagine they would be quite stubborn that way, being sons of a preacher. Can I see them? Marcel, take me to go to the disciplinary barracks. Oui, Monsieur Captain. A most pleasant visit with your cousins, Monsieur. Thanks, General. You and your knives are becoming legendary, Mr. Bowie. I'd like to cross blades with you someday. In a friendly way, of course. Yeah, I imagine you could be real friendly with a blade. A butcher of Barbados, they call me. This way. Didn't you once sail out of Trinidad on a brig called the Starlight? I did. A friend of mine was on that ship, a man called Mark Melville. He met with an accident, as I recall, sir. Yeah. Sailor. You'll find your cousins in there. Hey! The stupid American clod! Cousin Jim! What are you doing here? Looking for you two. And now that I've found you, you don't look so good. I don't feel so good either. Look at our backs, Cousin Jim. They've been whipping us Ooh. like mules. Well, it's no more than you deserve. Running away from your mother, not even writing to her. We couldn't, Cousin Jim. They wouldn't let us. Well, what's it all about? Have you found out anything? They had us collecting goods from the docks. Supplies for the Patriots in Venezuela. Then we saw your name on some of it, and we knew better. Oh. What are you grinning about? Oh, well, uh, just something Mama said. The Lord works in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. And it looks like we're going to have to perform a little wonder ourselves. Any ideas how we're going to get out of here? We've been preparing while we've been waiting. Look. Well, now, look at this. We made it. Piece of old iron hinge. We all took turns scraping it on the stone sill. Finally got an edge on it. You sure did. Can you use it? I can try. They ever feed you, boy? Twice a day they push in some hog slop. She's walking again. Who is? Miss Dupre. Miss Dupre? Yeah, she's a prisoner like we are. She is, is she?
Give me the keys. That way. Watch yourselves. Look out! Oh. Mademoiselle Dupre. Oh, it's your boy. I heard you were up here. Jouvin, the beast. He found out I was trying to help you. I think he intends to kill me. Well, tell me about it later. Let's get out of here. Before you leave, Mr. Bowie, I should like the pleasure of engagement. Knife to knife. It is your own blade, monsieur. I dislike taking unfair advantage. Stand back, mademoiselle. I knew the second mate on that ship. It was no accident to kill Mark Melville. He got a knife in the back. Yes, American, this one. It was a nice notch. You see, I have a reputation, too. You will be the tenth and most famous of all my victims. Keep bragging, Butcher. I don't like to take unfair advantage, either. That was stupid of you, American. I can so easily break your bones. Come right ahead. You, I'd be grateful. You said your heart's desire is to return to France, isn't it? It was. Rubies, they're worth a fortune. I ought to pay your passage back to France. That is only my second choice now. And your first? Don't you know, really? I'm nothing but trouble, Madeline. Nothing but trouble. You don't believe me? Ask my mother. Better hurry, Cosman. Oh, Hello, boys. We got him down, but we can't guarantee how long. Well, come on. Holmes, boys. Yes, I did. That home safe and sound. I just came from there. Oh, the Lord be praised. I knew you could do it, Jim. Oh, you did, huh? I see you didn't take my name out of the Bible. Oh, sure. You knew I couldn't do that. No, I didn't. I wasn't sure. You can be pretty ornery sometimes. Are you all right? Yes, I am. We broke up that gang of river pirates, and their leaders are in jail. And your $10,000, did you get it back? Well, most of it. I lost around 1000 I'd say. But it was worth it. I learned two lessons on this trip. What lessons? Well, first, you were right, Mama. The Lord does move in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. And second, there isn't an actress in New Orleans as pretty as you. Why, Jim! And here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello, everyone. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And we'll be with us again next week for another exciting adventure in the life of Jim Boy. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold adventuring man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, battled for right with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he, indestructible steel was he. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty 
adventuring man. He roamed the wilderness unafraid from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man. Mm.